In the following video, we're going to look at how to solve radical inequalities. Now, the solving process for radical inequalities is very similar to solving radical equations. However, at the end, when we check our solutions, we are going to have to keep in mind to check for a boundary. And the reason why we're going to have to keep that in mind for these inequalities is because the expression we're taking the square root of, the radical of, cannot be a negative number. So the expression has to be greater than or equal to zero. So we check for a boundary based off of the idea of not being allowed to take the square root of a negative. So to understand this boundary better, let's just go through the problems and see how we would solve it. So the idea is very similar to what we've done before. You want to isolate the radical first before you start moving things inside of it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of my positive 6 by subtracting 6 from both sides. And so that gives me the negative of the square root of 2y plus 1 is less than negative 3. Same idea, I need to get rid of this coefficient of negative 1, so I'm going to divide each side by negative 1 so that they cancel each other out. And I have to also keep in mind, since I am solving an inequality, I just divided by a negative, so I must flip the inequality symbol. And so negative 3 divided by negative 1 is a positive 3. And so now I have my radical completely isolated. I can cancel out the square root by taking both sides and squaring them. And that way the square and square root cancel, and I'm left with just my 2y plus 1 is equal to 3 squared, which is 9. So 2y plus 1 is greater than 9. I would subtract 1 from both sides to get 2y is greater than 8. And then I would divide by 2 to get y is greater than 4. Now I have y is greater than 4. That is my temporary solution. What I need to do at this point is I need to check for a boundary. Now the boundary occurs where your expression inside the radical is greater than or equal to zero. That is going to tell you the lowest possible value of y that can exist. So we need to check, is there a boundary? So to check, you set whatever your expression inside the square root, set it to be greater than or equal to 0, and solve. So I get 2y is greater than or equal to negative 1, divided by 2, y is greater than or equal to negative 1 half. And so if there were a boundary, if my statement, inequality statement, were going to the left on a number line, I'll just show a number line so we can examine it here in this example. You know, here's negative 1 half. Here's positive 4. No, my solution says y is greater than 4. The boundary says, hey, you know, y has to be greater than or equal to negative 1 half. And so seeing how my arrow pointing towards the solutions in this number line is not going backwards, this boundary is not necessary because I am already within this red range. My solution space is already within where that boundary exists. So my final answer is y is greater than 4. The boundary is already taken care of. Visually, I can see that here. We'll look at an example in number 9. That involves a little more process and thinking with how to solve and looking at that boundary. So take a look. I have radicals on the same side of my inequality. And so I'm going to do the same thing I would do if it were an equation. I'm going to put them on separate sides. So I'm going to move the easier one, which is by adding the square root of x to both sides. And so I'm left with the square root of x plus 12 is greater than 2 plus the square root of x. Same idea. If I look at that left side, the square root is completely isolated. So I'm going to square the left side, which means I'm going to have to square the right side. However, I notice on the right side, I have two terms. So to square the right side is going to involve actually writing out and distributing. 
the left side is very simple. Squaring the square root of x plus 12 just gives me x plus 12. And I'm going to bring that down to give myself some room to square 2 plus the square root of x. So I'm going to write out what that means. That means I have 2 plus the square root of x times 2 plus the square root of x. And I'm going to distribute and combine like terms to simplify. 2 and 2 is 4. 2 and radical x is 2 radical x. Radical x is 2 is 2 radical x. And radical x times radical x is a positive x. And if I combine like terms, I'm going to get 4 plus 4 radical x plus x. And I notice I have an x on the left side of the inequality. And I have an x on the right side of the inequality. And those are going to cancel. And so the actual statement I have is that 12 is greater than 4 plus 4 times the square root of x. So I would subtract 4 from both sides, get 8 is greater than 4 square root of x to isolate the radical. Then divide by the coefficient, divide by 4 get, to get 2 is greater than x. And now that the square root is all by itself and isolated, I can cancel it out by squaring both sides. And so I get 4 is greater than x, which means x is less than 4. Now that's my temporary answer. I am now going to have to check for a boundary. Now in this problem, I had two square roots. I had the square root of x plus 12. So I'm going to set that to be greater than or equal to 0. And I had just plain old square root of x. And so I'm going to take x and just set that to be greater than or equal to 0. So here's one boundary. Now I need to check what this boundary is. I would subtract 12 from both sides, get x is greater than or equal to negative 12. And so if I look at the number line, I have my solution, which was x is less than 4. I have the first boundary. We need to figure out which one is the real boundary. The first boundary is that x has to be greater than or equal to 0. The next one is that x has to be greater than or equal to negative 12. Well, if I draw my solution of x being less than 4, What's going to be the first boundary it hits? And the first boundary it hits is this one right here, that x has to be greater than or equal to 0. And so that's going to be the lower end of the boundary. So my final statement is that 0 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 4, right? my compound inequality. And we can see that with our graph. Zero is included. Our solution is between them. So zero is less than or equal to x, which is less than four. And so we have to be careful when solving our radical inequalities. We need to keep in mind that we will have to check for a boundary. And the boundary exists where the expression inside the radical is set greater than or equal to zero and then solved. And we have to make sure we include that or check to see if it is included in our final answer. 